Welcome all of you to DACA English Study. The family finally gets back to the cottage. Everyone is very happy, but they are also tired. The sun is shining, and everything seems in perfect order. They park the cars and go to the cottage. That's strange," says Dad. "I can't move the key. I can't open the door." Let's try the other door," Mum says. They walk to the small door at the back of the cottage. Suddenly, everyone stops. The door is open. Impossible," says Laura. "Only Mrs. Black has got a key." Mum and Auntie Barbara scream. <gasps> Thieves! They say. Inside the cottage, there is chaos. The cupboards are empty, the drawers are open, and things are on the floor. Our money says Dad. <gasps> My jewelry says Mum. Uncle Stephen says, "What's missing? We must phone the police." They look in all the rooms, but nothing is missing. Look, our money is here. <laughs> the thief doesn't want money, says Dad happily. And look, my jewelry is here. He doesn't want my diamond ring, says Mum. So why? What is interesting for a thief here? asks Max. Uncle Stephen's face is very serious. I think I know the answer to that question. This is what the thief wants, he says, and takes the book of mysteries from his bag. That old book. But why? asks Max. I am studying the mystery of Stonehenge. Some people think that it is an ancient computer. Uncle Stephen explains. I don't understand, says Laura. Ancient people understand lots of things that we don't understand now. Things about the stars, about energy, mathematics, and communication. We think that Stonehenge is an enormous computer. It connects information to other ancient computers round the world, like the pyramids," says Laura excitedly. "Exactly. Perhaps these computers communicate with spacemen too." "Wow," says Max. Uncle Stephen continues. "My old book of mysteries has a secret code." But there is a symbol I don't understand. I want to understand the symbol because I want to understand Stonehenge. This computer can be very dangerous because bad people can use the information. We must protect the book. Do you understand? Yes. They all reply. Now let's tidy the house. Everyone must keep their eyes and ears open. Yes. yes they all reply. The twins are tidying the house. Suddenly, Laura stops and says, "Max, look! What do you think this is?" She gives her brother a small silver object. It is round with a triangle and a strange cross in the middle. It's got a pin at the back. It's a brooch. Yes, perhaps it belongs to the thief. Let's give it to Uncle Stephen. They tell their uncle the story, and he looks at the small object. He puts it in his desk, and his face is serious. He doesn't say anything. Max and Laura go into the living room. There's something strange about that object, Laura. Says Max. I know that symbol. Yes. Says Laura. Me too. I recognise it, but where from? Chapter Seven: A Noisy Night. At seven o'clock, Mrs. Black arrives. She helps cook the dinner and listens to the story. Terrible, she says. Every summer there are thieves in Stonecross. They know there are lots of tourists, you see. But you say that tourists don't come here. Answers Laura. Ah, oh, yes.、Uh, well, it depends. Some summers there are a lot. Some summers there aren't a lot. Suddenly, a telephone rings. 
It is Mrs. Black's mobile phone. Oh, excuse me, she says, and smiles at everyone. She goes to the hall and speaks in a soft voice. Yes, yes, okay, don't worry, everything's all right. I don't know, perhaps tonight, perhaps tomorrow night. Okay, bye. My son, she explains. He's twenty-seven and he doesn't know how to cook. <laughs> Can you believe it? Mum laughs. <laughs> I'm sure he prefers your wonderful cooking. Later that evening, everyone is playing cards together. Mum is winning. She always wins. Mrs. Black says, Who wants a nice cup of hot chocolate? During the evening and at night, it is cold in the house. They say, Yes, please, Mrs. Black. But Laura says, No, thank you. The housekeeper seems offended. Why not? She asks angrily. Hot chocolate helps you sleep. I can sleep with no problems, thank you, replies Laura. Mrs. Black is not very happy, but goes to the kitchen to make hot chocolate for the others. It is creamy, chocolatey and delicious. This is wonderful, Mrs. Black. What is the special ingredient? Do you have a secret recipe? asks Mum. It's my grandmother's secret recipe, <laughs> she says and laughs. She says good night and goes home. Soon, everyone is very sleepy and goes to bed. Only Laura isn't tired. It is the middle of the night. Outside, the sky is full of stars, but there is no moon. Everyone is sleeping. Mum is dreaming, and Dad is snoring. Suddenly, Laura sits up in her bed. There is a noise. Someone is downstairs. She relaxes. It is probably her father. He sometimes gets up and sleepwalks. But no, she can hear her father. He is snoring in his bedroom. She gets up very quietly. Yes, there is someone. The noise is in the study. She goes downstairs. She is very quiet. When she is outside the study, she stops and listens. She hears the sound of paper. I must be brave, she says, and pushes the door open quietly. Stop, thief! she shouts. But to her surprise, she sees Mrs. Black. She is sitting at Uncle Stephen's desk, reading his notebooks. Oh, Mrs. Black, it's you, says Laura. Uh, hello, Laura. I can't find my car keys. Perhaps they are here. I don't want to disturb everyone. Oh, all right, says Laura. But then she remembers Mrs. Black hasn't got a car. At that moment, Dad and Uncle Stephen arrive. They think there is another thief. Dad smiles and laughs. Phew, he's Mrs. Black. Hello, Mrs. Black. You're working late tonight. Uncle Stephen doesn't laugh. What are you doing in my study, Mrs. Black? He asks. She tells him the story of the car keys. Uncle Stephen replies, Tomorrow we can all look for the keys together. Now it's time to sleep. Good night, Mrs. Black. He opens the door and the housekeeper goes out. She doesn't look at Uncle Stephen when she says, Good night, everyone. Chapter 8 Now I Remember For two or three days, Everything is normal and everyone is happy. Mrs. Black says her son has got the car keys and they aren't lost after all. 
Laura looks at Mrs. Black, but decides not to say anything. On Wednesday afternoon, Mum and Dad go walking. Dad wants to sleep, but Mum says, No, Andrew, you can't sleep all holiday. Oh, all right, he replies, but he is not very happy. What about you, Stephen? Come with us. No, thank you. I must work. Auntie Barbara laughs <laughs> and says to Mum, Sarah, your husband sleeps all the time, and my husband works all the time. Don't laugh, Barbara, replies Uncle Stephen. My work is very important. Everyone laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> Sometimes Uncle Stephen is very funny. <laughs> Today, I want to work a lot. Please don't disturb me, he says, and goes to the study. Can I come with you too? asks Auntie Barbara. Of, of course, course, they reply. They all put on their walking boots and say goodbye to the twins. Max and Laura decide to explore a different part of the village. In the village there is a small hill. It is a strange shape, and on the top there is a stone cross. The village probably has the name Stone Cross because there is a stone cross on the hill, says Laura. Very clever, Sherlock, says her brother. They look up to the cross on the hill. Two people are talking near it. The sun is behind them, and the twins can't see very well. Who are those two people? They ask together. Mrs. Black and Martin Knight. Let's go and listen, says Max. No, Max, says Laura. We must listen to. Suddenly she stops. Her face is white. Max, now I remember. Max's face is white too. He remembers the same thing. I know. Me too. The symbol. Yes, I know where it comes from. Yes, Mrs. Black's earrings. It's the same symbol. What? I remember it from Martin Knight's tie. What? This means Mrs. Black and Martin Knight know the thief. Perhaps one of them is the thief. Do you remember Mrs. Black reading Uncle Stephen's notebook? Do you remember Martin Knight's questions? What can we do? Come on, Laura, follow me, says Max. They start to go up the hill, but Mrs. Black and Martin Knight aren't there. We're too late. Where are they now? says Laura. I don't know. Answers Max. Come on, let's go home and tell Uncle Stephen what we know. They start to walk home, but on the hill, two dark shadows are watching them from behind the stone cross. Thanks for watching Dhaka English Study Bangladesh.